in this Roots and Reflections, we're going back to our roots. As Paul stated concerning the olive tree, come and let us celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles, the Sukkot celebration. Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, is one of the joyous celebrations in Israel every year. In fact, Scripture exhorts us to celebrate this feast. As we read in Leviticus chapter 23, speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths. The scriptures explicitly tell us and command the nations to come up every year to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. In fact, the prophet Zechariah said these very words when he said, And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall be that whichever of the families of the earth do not come up to Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, on them there will be no rain. Lord, send your rain upon the nations. It is scriptural for the Jew and the Christian. As Zechariah 14 says that any nation that does not serve the Lord in Jerusalem will get no rain. That's a very serious curse. Uh, all nations are to serve the Lord in Jerusalem. You know, there's a prayer that Jews say, and it's the same prayer that Christians say, that every knee will bend and every tongue will swear loyalty. A God's plan, eventually, is that the whole world will believe in his Bible, in his book, and will believe in him, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, these are things that Jews and Christians agree upon. Tabernacles, or Sukkot, is a Hebrew moed, or appointed time established by the Lord God of Israel to meet with his people. It's an autumn festival associated with the final agricultural harvest also referred to as the Feast of Ingathering. In obedience to God's calling, my wife Bati and I, along with dedicated colleagues, organized the annual Sukkot celebration in Jerusalem, a tour and conference for the remnant of the nations who join us, the remnant of Israel in keeping this Moed, the appointed time. Stay up to date with what's happening in Israel and the Jewish and Arab people with up-to-the-minute information and news from a biblical perspective. Sign up today to the Jerusalem News Network, a wealth of free information, comment, and up-to-date news direct from believers living in the land. This includes our regular Jerusalem on the Line email update, now available in multiple languages. To sign up, go to rootsforyou.tv. This is the best way to keep informed of what's going on in Israel. Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Listen, during the Sukkot celebration, we have Levitical dancing, pageantry, wonderful Bible teaching with an in-depth look at what the scriptures tell us about life in Israel as it was, as it is, and as it will be when the Messiah comes. This is the importance of Sukkot. When we worship, we dance, we integrate with the Word. That's really getting back to our roots. We come here because we know the Bible, 
And in Jack West 14 says that those who come to Israel during the Zuko period will be blessed. And we want to bring the blessing back to Singapore. And I'm grateful to be here. And I know again this year during Sukkot and Sukkot celebration, I will never be the same. It is absolutely uh, mind-bending and what a mind-opener it is to, uh, to actually be here. Never set foot in the land before. Absolutely awesome. I think it's a, a God's appointed time. Uh, the word has gone out uh, from Yerushalayim a long time ago, and uh, it has come full circle. So I'm, I'm here. It also is an outstanding show of love to the Jewish people in the state of Israel. When so many Christian Zionists come from all over the world, they say that uh, this year there was a record number, over 7,000 for more than 100 nations. It was really Batya's words that, that brought me. And, and it seems like each year I've said, Lord, I didn't get this year. Will it be next year in Jerusalem? You know the saying? So it became a kind of a thing between the Lord and me. And then, of course, at the very end of the DVD, Batya said, this year in Jerusalem. We want to invite you to celebrate with us Sukkot. Something just went straight in my spirit and I thought, wow, Lord, could it be this year? So straight away, I downloaded a registration form, went home to my husband and said, how do you fancy going to Jerusalem in September? And of course he did. So that's really why we're here. Sukkot celebration in Jerusalem has a distinct messianic flavor and coincides with the International Christian Embassy Jerusalem's Feast of Tabernacles event, celebrated since 1979. His marvelous deeds among all the people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. It is a feast that has a Jewish component, a very strong one, that celebrates the kingdom of God. But it goes bigger than a localized kingdom. It embraces the nations. So it becomes the biblical feast where the nations are the recipients of the light and the revelation of the God of Israel. So what a wonderful event for Christians to not only participate in their love for Israel, but also in a biblical feast that legitimizes their presence. The branches of this olive tree remind us of a beautiful picture of Jew and Gentile together as one in the Messiah, one olive tree. Psalm 133 says, Hine matov Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Celebrating Sukkot together with the Feast of Tabernacles, we are showing God's love, His unity for us, as it reminds us back to when Solomon dedicated the first temple during the Feast of Tabernacles. We are living stones, grafted together, built together jointly as one temple, one living temple in the Lord. Have you ever wanted to come and experience firsthand the land of Israel, to walk the footsteps of Yeshua, or to gain a greater understanding of the Bible? At Roots and Reflections, we want to see that desire fulfilled. 
We run regular tours to Israel and would be delighted to host you, your family and friends for the opportunity of a lifetime as you come and experience the land of the Bible with us. Perhaps you've toured before and now want to come back. We also have a special tour just for you. If you'd like the opportunity to come with us on our never-to-be-forgotten tour of Israel, then register your interest today to receive regular updates on our forthcoming tours. Either call the number on the screen, email us at barry at rootsforyou.tv or go to our website and register. We'll then send you details of the next tour we have running. Our tours are always oversubscribed, so register your interest now and we'll see you in Israel. So one of the fascinating things is the International Christian Embassy of Jerusalem begins its celebration out in En Gedi. Why there? Because God comes from the East and time and time again, whether it be the great prophets, whether it be John the Baptist, whether it be uh, Jesus himself, um, they all came from the east toward the city. It's as if from that wilderness experience, that, that barren beauty, as it were, that there's a demonstration of God because there's no more um, wilderness experience than that. And for sure, it's in that context you need God. And so we begin there because it symbolizes this, this coming of God. As the lightning flashes from the east to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. There's this idea in the Bible that, that the glory of God comes from the east and then fills the temple and departs from the temple and goes to the east. So in like manner, we, we begin in the east and then we ascend. Uh, a prophetic statement that, uh, that God is imminent, God is coming, God is, is present, God is king. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and its fighting men. So Joshua instructed the people to do all that the Lord had commanded. Shout! For God has given us the city! Shout! Children's Choir, yes, all the way from Uganda, and uh, that is uh, very special. These are all AIDS orphans, and uh, it's just a wonderful opportunity for people to see the grace of God, that in a situation of utter barrenness and destruction and hopelessness, uh, God has raised up these children with his love and his joy and his redemption, and, and unbelievable in their, in their love for Jesus. And when you think of their context, you think, wow, it tells everyone our God is a God of hope. <laughs> Yeah. 
Through the ministry of the Joseph Storehouse, we are able to respond quickly and bring help and relief to the victims of terror and rocket attacks. We provide vital emergency equipment and medical supplies to frontline hospitals and humanitarian aid to the victims. Your giving to this ministry enables us to respond quickly. Please call the number on the screen or go online to rootsforyou.tv and give today. Together we can touch the lives of the victims of terror attacks across Israel and bring relief to those who need it most. Thank you. Here on the Mount of Olives, Yeshua told his disciples, you will not see me again till you say these words, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Our phrase, the word of the week is, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Is it blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord? Yeshua said this in the Brit Hadashah or the New Covenant. He said, Oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem. He wept over the city and how they had stoned the prophets and everything. He said, You will not see me again until you, the very Messiah that came to our people, to my people, I'm a Jewish believer in Yeshua, you will not see me again until you say, Baruch Abab Hashem Adonai, until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Number 70 is significant for Sukkot, the Bible, and the nations. The ancients spoke of the 70 nations of the world, meaning the Gentile nations. The tabernacle measured 70 cubits, corresponding to the 70 holy days of the Jewish calendar, consisting of 52 Sabbaths, 7 days of Passover, 8 days of Sukkot, and one each for Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, and Yom Kippur, a total of 70, of course when adjusted with the Hebrew 13th month. So the number of sacrifices you have connected with, uh, with Sukkot is 70. Now in the Bible, from the book of Deuteronomy and so on, the number 70 represents the nations of the world. So there's a hint there symbolically in even the Jewish understanding of, of tabernacles that it was supposed to be extended not just from the children of Israel, but out to the nations of the world. There's a hint there of the reconciliation of the Jewish people and the nations. A highlight of the Sukkot celebration during the Feast of Tabernacles is the Jerusalem March, where the nations come together waving flags of the nations and banners expressing their solidarity and love for Israel as they march through the streets of Jerusalem and touch the hearts of the people here. We love you so. We pray for you every day. France loves you. France loves you. We're here for you and we love you. God bless you. Brazil love is this hell! 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 Just feel the need to stand with Israel, like being, being rooted in Israel, really. I like seeing those little kids 
on a Canadian flag. Israel because I believe in, uh, in the Bible and the promises and that it is a land of promise. Imagine your child, grandchild, nephew or niece having to go to school with no books, pencils, ruler or even a school bag. Today in Israel, one in three children live below the poverty line, and this is indeed the case for many of them. The Pack to School project, run by the Joseph Storehouse, aims to address just that. Over the past several years, we have provided tens of thousands of school backpacks to both Jewish and Arab children across Israel. And with your help, we can provide even more. Would you give a gift today of $20 that will provide one child with a school backpack? Or perhaps you can do more and provide multiple children with backpacks. Please call the number on the screen now or go online to rootsforyou.tv and give your best gift today. Let's partner together and pack these children off to school with a blessing of love. I love the people of this land, I love the country this country and I know the roots of my faith are right here. I really love Israel, I love all the people of Israel and I know lots of young Israelis who travel to New Zealand. It, it, it sets uh, President, really, uh, how we have to look at Christians towards the first chosen ones. I think the biblical importance of it is that it, it demonstrates again the biblical notion that God is sovereign over the nations. And this celebration is all about the sovereignty of God, that he's not absent from the halls of government. The halls of government in Europe or wherever else, United Nations, may like to exclude God from their gatherings. But this celebration, with its Jewish-rooted context, is a reminder that the God of Israel is the only God of the universe. He's very much involved in human affairs. Hence the tabernacle or the sukkah with leafy branches, which does not give the celebrant protection. Our ultimate source in life for everything is God himself, so it's a celebration of the kingship of God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Why do the nations rage and, and think a vain thing in their rebellion against God? So it's this notion that God is not absent from his world. He's present in it. And this is the significance for a world that has gone secular, humanistic, and uh, uh, seeks to drive God from the halls of governance. In Zechariah 8.23, it says, In those days, ten men of all languages will grab hold of the Jews' garment and say, We will go with you because we know the Lord is with you. Uh, we will go with you where? To Jerusalem. When? In those days. When is those days? Now. Uh, so we will go with you with ten men of different nations, different languages. So this uh, festival of Sukkot really is the, is the jewel in the crown of what I consider the, the need for Judeo-Christian marching together, especially in these times to defend Jerusalem so that we should not lose Jerusalem. Just like the Bible says to come here to worship the Lord and celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle. For Christians, the Sukkot holiday is an extrovert holiday because the Christians leave their homes, leave their countries to come to Jerusalem to serve God, to serve the Lord. Because if God commands the Christians to be here, that's a double-edged sword. In other words, God is commanding the Christians to be here, but they can't be here if we as Jews don't let them in. And if we as Jews don't bless them and say, welcome home, brothers and sisters. And so Sukkot, I think, is a holiday of um, a, a reconciliation. And this Roots and Reflections, we're coming up. 
to Jerusalem to celebrate Sukkot. I've heard rumor that you know when the Messiah is coming back. Yes, a- absolutely, Barry, and uh, it's coming out in my new book. And my new book is destined to be published on the day he puts his feet on the Mount of Olives. <laughs> what do you think is the next thing on God's calendar here? <laughs> That's hard to say, but, uh, but uh, uh, as, as, as I look at things, I think one of the next things on God's calendar is something's going to happen in the wider region here. Um, whether by conflict or otherwise, which we can all see emerging, that will open up, I believe, first of all, the Arab world for an incredible visitation of God. And that, I think, is on his agenda, because he loves the Arab people. Holy is the Lord God Holy is the Lord. The Sukkot celebration, Feast of Tabernacles, transcends past, present, and future in God's mercy to Israel and the nations. It was during Sukkot that King Solomon dedicated the first temple and that Ezra restored the word of the Lord to the regathered exiles in Jerusalem. In the future messianic age, tabernacles will continue, for praise to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob will never cease. I see it as an ongoing celebration, at least for now, and definitely in the Messianic age, and how eternity unfolds with that glorious city, I'm not too sure, but I'm quite intrigued to think that maybe forever we will celebrate this wonderful feast. After all, when that city comes, the new Jerusalem, the Bible says the tabernacle of God is now with men. And in my mind, the New Jerusalem is the new Feast of Tabernacles, the great and final culmination. Why? God will dwell with men. That is tabernacling. For a life-changing experience, come celebrate Sukkot in Jerusalem and worship the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Baruch Abba B'Shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.